That is an absolute cracker. Look at him. Oh, how's the colours? How is the colours? He's a nice fish. Let's keep him away from the Susie. One more round and I'll try and aim for his head. Righto guys, I'm going to run a bit of a um, wahoo spread first. So deep diving nomad. He's going to be go out, oh nice little over on there. On the other side, I'm going to run the Rapala Magnum Extreme. Yeah, that's what it's called. And straight up the guts, gonna run the garfish. Oh, hasn't hasn't produced a fish yet, but I'm confident the Wahoo sees that thing. It's gonna absolutely smack it. Rightio. Just spin around and we'll deploy the hounds. Well good morning guys and welcome to another Sammy Hitsky fishing adventure. I'm out very early this morning. It's like 20 past four and I'm already out. I've got the lures in the water, having a trial for pelagics today. Plan is to try and attack some wahoo early on, see if they're around, and then uh, cruise a bit wider, change lures, see if I can find a marlin or a dolphin fish. Uh, the water's nice and warm, 25 degrees. The weather is absolutely cracking. So fingers crossed, I can get these lures in front of some fish. I'm keen. Fishing solo today, so it's always fun. I uh, haven't had to deal with a double hookup solo yet. I don't know if today's gonna be the day, but hey, if it comes along, I'll definitely deal with it when it happens. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've got too much to add. It's gonna be a, a good day. Probably um, probably finish up just around, around lunchtime. Hopefully you've got something to show for our efforts. Anyways, sit back, relax, enjoy the video. I'm sure it's gonna be a cracker. Jeez. I forgot to mention guys, if you entered last week's competition, I'll be drawing out the two winners for the glide bait packs at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Well, no hits on the troll. Heap of people around now, I haven't seen anyone hook up. I think it is time to Ditch the skirts, or oh, ditch the divers, more like it, and change to the skirts. Head out wide, and uh, see if we can't find a little black marlin or a, uh, a dolphin fish. I think a big dolly would be a lovely, lovely addition to the boat. Bit of a shame, I thought we were going to get on there. Good water temperature. Good colour. But yeah, it just wasn't meant to be. Probably see all the boats in the background there. Everyone's cutting laps and trolling around. It's just not much going on. So, no point wasting time there. Just got a fingers crossed they, uh, they don't come on the shore. I didn't mark any. Anything too crazy on the sounder either, so I don't mind leaving. I don't think it's going to go crazy. I don't think I'm going to miss much. Time to put the skirts out. So first one I'm going. This little guy here looks like a little flying fish. It's a dolphin fish killer. Make sure everything's sitting straight. Ooh. This one's going to go way out the back. Right in clean water away from everything. Oh, that'll do. Next one, got the big Lumo. They'll definitely see that one, no mistaking that. Should leave a big bubble trail. Yeah, 
That looks good. This one's going to go long corner. Or across, because I'm only running three, it's going to go across between long corner and short rigger. Pretty well just going to stage these three back uh, in a stagger. And this one will be my my short lure. Big black, it's called a salt shaker. It uh, makes a heap of commotion. Goes crazy. Nice black color for a bit of silhouette. I like it, I like it. So I'll have this, this one pretty close to the boat. Maybe just, just out of the prop wash there. I reckon about there. All right. We are ready to go. Time to cover some Ks. That's one of the new Cape Morton fads. Actually didn't know it was located right here, but I'll um, obviously troll past it and see if there's a dolphin fish there. I haven't been out here before. Looks very new, there's no growth or anything on it just yet. Probably take a little while before it kind of goes full, full crazy, but good to see the fisheries chucking some, uh, some infrastructure our way. That'll be awesome in a year or two. Yeah! I saw something on the surface before. we got here all right chuck him in this holder let's clear this rod oh it's a big dolly I just saw him jump Nice big dolly. Okay. Now let's deal with it. Turn that off. Well, we are on. How good? How good? I actually saw something on the surface as I went past. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera. I didn't even know the camera was recording, to be honest. Um, and then I look back, and this guy just come flying up behind the short lure and absolutely belted it. Saw it jump just before. He's got a fair bit of line on me, so I'm just slowly cruising towards him. Takes a little while to clear, clear the lines. He looked to be a pretty decent fish. I was hoping to get a dolly today. So I'd love to stay connected to this guy. In about 110 metres of water at the moment. So he's right out, out the back here. Whew. How good. All right. We've got... Mono back on the reel. Probably be about 80 metres away, I reckon. Just need this guy to play the ball right next to the boat. 
we've got plenty of time. Oh, there he is up on the surface there. Oh, taking a bit more line. I think it's a nice fish. Yeah, there he is. Solo game fishing. Always a bit of drama. I'll tell you what, it's good fun. Well, it's good fun when you hook up. This morning was a bit, bit disappointing. Now, I have to admit, I do love dolphin fish as a table fish. So, if I get the opportunity, I will be putting the gaff into this one. Oh, it is a nice fish. Very nice, very nice dolly. Just got to look at him then. Just leaving the boat in gear and just slowly cruising around with him. I think he's got some mates cruising around alongside him. Keep on seeing flashes of blue. He's not happy. He's taking a bit of line off me now. Oh, it is. It's a big bull. It's a big bull dolly. Oh, I'd really like to get this guy in. It's a big bull. It's a real nice fish. Going deep on me. Come on, fella. Be good. Need you to come up here. Don't want to rush him either. Only got the single hook on the skirt. If you don't know the hook up. It can be good or it could be just lipped. I don't want to rush this guy because he is an absolute beauty from what I saw. Oh, he's going around the boat. Beauty of a centre console. We can just follow him now. Got a couple of hooks on the deck there, so I do have to look out for them. I haven't seen dollies do this before. Doing the marlin. Marlin go deep. Slowly ease him up. Should be able to get colour pretty soon. I don't think he's too far away. There's, there he is. Oh, it's a great fish. Look at him. Look at him. There's the wind on. That is an absolute cracker. Look at him. Oh, how's the colours? How is the colours? He's a nice fish. Let's keep him away from the Susie. Oh, no. Might get a shot at him very shortly here if he behaves. Oh, that's a great dolphin fish. Oh, he's not even, he's not hooked very well. One more round and I'll try and aim for his head. Oh. He's not done yet. But he's in the boat! Woo! Easy, mate. You ripper! All right! Woo! We got one. Nice big dolphin fish. I'm just going to grab this hook out. He was hooked actually quite well. I'll take that back. Now these guys are notorious for going crazy in the boat. Oh, here's a lump. Big bull dolly. Oh, all right. Have a go with that. Well, that is awesome. What a fish. Oh, I'm stoked. Saw the eat and everything. This guy come flying in and absolutely smashed it. Put up a great fight too. And I'll tell you what, I love dolphin fish on the table. Probably my second favorite sashimi after, uh, after yellowfin. And I'll tell you what, bit of a bit of panko crumb, 
cook him in butter. Oh my goodness, they are something else. But have a go at the colours on him. See if I can do this without losing him. Big, oh, big fin on the top. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Woo! Oh no! Stay calm. I don't want to drop him over the side. Oh, that is awesome. So good. Oh, yes. Now I just need a mile and my day is complete. How good is that? Right, I'm going to icky jam you this guy and, uh, and, and, and bleed him and get him on the ice. What a great fish. Look at the colours. How good is that? Well, that's awesome. I'm going to let him bleed out there. Once I get on the move, I'm going to put the deck wash. I forgot my deck wash hose. Oh, it's got a split and I haven't fixed it yet. And um, I'll get the deck wash pumping onto him to bleed him out more. But I think uh, the right thing to do would be get the lures back in the water. <sighs> going to be fish like that around. Holy struth. Oh, that was so good. Oh, I'm pumped. That makes the early start worthwhile. Well, he wanted the short one. But I literally, I think I just about drove over him. I saw him swirl. I thought it was like a puffer fish or something. Saw him swirl. And the next minute, the swirl behind the lure. And then, game on. So he didn't even look at another lure. He just went, I'll have the first one that's going, thank you. Give it to me and give it to me now. But I'm happy with the, uh, the lure choices so far. I think they're, they're good. We've got a nice bit of variety, nice bit of colour. Tell you what, if I can find a, find a marlin uh, amongst, amongst the bloody the lot as well, I'll be a stoked man. Dolphin fish marlin. I don't need a bloody wahoo to get the Morton Slam. I haven't had one of those in a while. And so far, the lucky lure. My boy. Make sure that point's all good. It's actually a bit rolled over. Give it a quick sharpen. Yeah, that's sharp. That is the spot. And we are back fishing. All right. Time to transfer to the ice. That is a big dolphin fish. That's a 1.5 metre bag. I wouldn't say there's a great deal of room at either end. That is big. <laughs> Woo! Righto. Let's do it again. Have to go at the conditions we got today. Ah, uh, this weather, pretty infrequent at the moment, but when you see a window, you better jump on it because they don't come very often. Absolute glamour. Now you may be wondering why I'm wearing a life jacket today. And um, look, it's something I didn't used to do, but I've, I've adopted the last little while and I think 
be well worth passing on to you guys and, and recommending that you do the same. If you're going to fish solo, particularly while you're game fishing. So while you're game fishing, there's a lot of time between bites. Um, you often move around the deck while the boat's in gear. Now if you fall out of the boat, your boat is gone. It's not coming back for you if there's no one to turn the wheel. And out here, it might be eight to 10 hours before someone realizes that you're gone or before you, someone else runs into you. So I'm not Michael Phelps, not Ian Thorpe. So I think it's very, very worthwhile to wear a life jacket. So if you end up in the drink without a boat, you got something that can keep you afloat until you get found. For minor discomfort, they have... Oh, oh, he's on, he's on, he's on. Woo hoo! I didn't see that. Oh, yes. Oh, another dolly. Another dolly. How good is that? Yee hoo hoo Another dolly. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, jumping all over the place. Madness, I reckon the lures have been back in the water for about 10 minutes, or oh, if that, five minutes. And I've got another dolly on. I just saw it jump before. It's not another nice fish. I was just talking about wearing life jackets and this rod went nuts. Just gonna clear this line. Alrighty. One lure away. Is that short lure again? I'm not only gonna have to put one lure out. Keeps up like that. All right, lure number two. Slow the boat down. Turn it around. And we're back in the game. Jeez, went from a very slow morning to pretty darn cool. Get rid of that ratchet for you guys. All right. <laughs> Hook up number two in the space of about 10 minutes. We might have a little bite or a little congregation of dollies out here. I haven't seen anything floating around. I'm not sure what they might be around, but definitely not complaining. Looked to be another solid fish. This was a cow. It wasn't a bull. So it might have been even that fish that um, was hanging around with the bull. I don't know, I'd like to get it close enough to the boat to have a proper look. Just, just leaving the boat in gear here so I can slowly get some line back, get up close to the fish so I'm not pulling it towards the static boat. It just drags your fight time out too long. Hooks wear a bit of a hole, they can fall out. You just have to be able to keep up with the winding and keep the pressure on. Yeah. <clears throat> And be ready to go around the boat. There's a beauty of center consoles. Dolly goes around the boat. I'll go around with it. Oh, change direction. There it is. Oh. Not as big as the other one. We're gonna get a jump here. There we go. How good. Well, trolling can get a bit monotonous and a bit boring at times, but I'll tell you what, when you have to wait five minutes between bites, it's uh, pretty damn exciting. It's one of those things, you never know when your next hit is gonna come. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's, oh, that's why it appeals to me. I love the, I love the kind of suddenness so that everything happens. It just goes from naught to 100 in, in just seconds, from calm boredom to utter chaos. I do love game fishing season. Oh, it's only, no, only a small one, still a nice fish. Still a nice table fish. So if I get the shot, she will be coming home as well. I say she because it's a cow. 
doesn't have that steep bull like head still got some going eh? oh putting on a show now well, we've just run out of battery on the head camera right at prime time Talk loud and hopefully you can see what's going on. Right now. Dolly number two. Nice cow. Alright. Just get the, the pointy bits out. Alright, dolly number two, she's very much alive and bleeding everywhere, so I'm going to dispatch her, put her out of her misery, and bleed her, but that is a nice cow, two dolphin fish in ten minutes, how good is that, I love summer, <laughs> looks like I've got plenty of nice fresh fish to uh, fill the fridge as well, as you can tell by my Christmas shirt, it's a couple of days before Chrissy, and uh, I think there's going to be some very, very happy family members when they see a packet of dolphin fish included in with their present. How good is that? Dolphin fish number two. I am stoked. Woo! Well, I think I should probably get those lures back in the water. It's only going to take another five minutes. I've got a bit of cleaning up to do, so I'll chuck them back in and uh, see how long the next one takes. Might be in for a bit of a session here. Well, we're on again. We are on again. This time, it took the, the shot, the shotgun got eaten. I thought I saw a big splash behind the long one, uh, behind uh, the long rigger, and look back, and that's when the shotgun keeled over. I reckon I've back, been back in the water dead set for five minutes. This is crazy. Absolutely crazy. I haven't seen a jump or anything yet, so I'm not sure what this one is. You'd have to suspect the dolphin fish. Oh. All right, let me at it. Let me at it. What have we got here? Oh, got some power. Get a bit of line back. Straight another boat of here. Oh, it's got some tow, whatever it is. Taking a bit of line. That's what the fans want. Now, if this is another dolphin fish, it will win its freedom. Two is plenty for a feed. Do not need three. Wouldn't say no to a wahoo though. We shouldn't be too far off getting a look here. You know what? Well, I've got no idea what it is. It is a wahoo. Well, unfortunately for him, he's coming with me. There's a bit of everything out here today. Not a bad little wahoo either. Not massive, but... Oh, he's not super well hooked. So, I will just... And apparently he's not done yet either. Got him! Oh, apparently he wasn't done. Oh, I 
just for the safety of everyone involved. I reckon Lewis has been back in the water for about 10 minutes this time. It's just starting to get comfortable. Big old Mr. Wahoo come cruising along. Missed one, I saw a big boil. And then I thought, oh, I must be seeing things, must be seeing things. Sure enough, the long, long shotgun lure got absolutely belted. This guy is a solid little fish, probably about 10 kilos. This is what I was chasing earlier in the day. Couldn't catch one then. Caught one now though. You ripper. Wahoo steaks on the barbecue. Coming right up. Woo! What a day. That's three fish in an hour. Oh, I'm getting a bit tired. I haven't even eaten my brekkie yet. I'm gonna have to have a feed. All right. Got to bleed this guy real quick as well. You want to preserve the flesh as good as possible. So give him, give him a bleed, brain spike him. Oh, I have belted him already, but I'll give him a brain spike as well. Just to make sure. Oh, slippery hands. Now, I reckon that'll do me for fish. Just sport fishing now. So if that marlin could be next, well, I reckon I could just about earn myself an early mark after that. Go home for tea and scones. Or maybe I'll just keep trolling around and catch a few more. We'll see what's next. It's pretty good at the moment. I'd love to know why all these fish are out here. I'm in about 130 meters of water. Now it's not unusual to get them out here. It's just that they seem to be very concentrated. Um, yeah, you wouldn't usually expect to just keep running into fish in the middle of nowhere like I'm currently doing. Uh, it just seems to be a bit of a constant procession. I'm definitely not one to complain for it though. Well, that's fish number three. Three from three, haven't dropped one yet, touched wood. And uh, lures are back in the water, so. All we need is that marlin now, and I've got a Morton Slam. Fingers crossed, little black marlin, that'd be absolutely unreal. That would be an all time day. Two dollies, a wahoo, and a marlin. Tell you what, trolling doesn't get any better than that in summer. So, fingers crossed, we come across one. That'd be an absolute day changer. Well, not day changer. It would be the cherry on the top. The piece to resistance. Oh, I'm not French. I didn't sound very French either. But Lou is in the water, so I'll give it 10 minutes if we're going by common, uh, by recent buddy traits. Well, I haven't had any action for the last little bit, but check out this. It looks like it's, oh, it's a school of bonito. Going ham on, um, on a school of bait. If I didn't have a freezer full of bonito ready to rock and roll, I would be loading up on troll baits right now. Look at them. Oh, they are. Uh, the mackerel would love them, but I've got heaps at home, so keep trolling, keep trolling. Oh, that's tempting. That is very tempting. All right, guys, well, no other hits, unfortunately. I couldn't scrape together a marlin. It's just after lunchtime now, so put a few more hours in and just couldn't get another bite, so I'm pretty well just going to thank my lucky stars I found that flurry of action when I did because it could have been a quiet day without it I'll tell you that much now for those interested I thought I'd quickly run through the gear that I use for trolling um, this isn't just to troll for marlin this is uh, to troll for wahoo mackerel pretty well any light tackle trolling I use these outfits um, the first one is a 16 size Tyrannos now I've got that spooled with 50 pound braid and about 100 meters of 24 kilo mono on top then I run an 80 or 100 pound wind on leader and I run that to a snap clip at the end. Now, when I'm ready to put a lure on or a bait or a skirt, I'll just clip the leader straight onto that snap swivel and I'm ready to rock and roll. That's the first one. Now, actually, I usually use these guys on the outside. So if I'm trolling with more than one person, which is generally the case, uh, I don't always fish solo, uh, I'll put these guys the furthest back. They've got the most line and they've got a heap of line. And because I've got that backing braid, I reckon I've got almost a thousand meters of line on such a super small reel. So it's really handy. Um, and it's a really great way to, to utilize these small reels. They're comfy to fish with, but you've still got plenty of line capacity if you need it. So yeah, I run these on the outside and the furthest back. So they have the most line out that when a big fish uh, takes a lure, even though there's a lot of line out there, there's still plenty in the bank. Now, my other two outfits I troll with are these guys here. This is a Tyrannos 12, so it's just a size smaller. And I've got that spooled with the same thing, 50 pound braid and 24 kilo mono on top. And I'm an 80 pound wind on leader, and I'll run that to a snap clip as well. Now, 
I probably should have mentioned the rods. That's a six foot six, uh, 40 to 100 pound rod. And this is a, I think it's a five foot. Doesn't say, oh, it's five foot eight and it's a 10 to 15 kilo rod. Now I specifically got these rods because they are the length that I wanted and the weighting that I wanted. So those longer rods, I wanted to fish them out on the outside, so I wanted more height to make sure they cleared these rods. Now these rods obviously being shorter, I run them generally up the middle and they keep the line a bit lower so these outside rods can cross over on the outside of them without getting tangled up. So that's the theory behind that. But very, very simple gear um, and very, very versatile in what you can use it for. I'll happily go live bait a marlin with this or troll for mackerel, troll baits, troll lures for wahoo, all that sort of stuff. Any light tackle trolling, these guys come out and they do it really well. Now, probably worth showing you these. These are called rod riggers. Now these little contraptions I use on my outside rod holders and it just allows you to position your rods any which way you want and point them out away from your boat and get a bit more elevation. So they're adjustable, that pin comes out and you can pick the, the height or the, uh, the width you want, like so. Simply chuck the pin back in and they just slide into your existing rod holders and allow you to get a bit extra spread. It's called a rod rigger because it's the small trailer boat version of, a, uh, of an outrigger. So with these, I can separate my lines enough that they don't get tangled. Um, of course, you still have to space them correctly. I go, I stagger them back. I go a lure, lure, then a lure, then a lure. And that just allows them to all kind of interpass. When you turn a corner, they all kind of come in and come out without touching each other. So you'll get the hang of that after a few, few trips on the water. It is something that you do need to kind of work out because uh, you can get some pretty momentous tangles when lures start touching each other. And, uh, and if you don't pick up on it quick, it goes pear-shaped really, really, really fast. Now I'll show you some lures. Now lure-wise, I don't think there's any really secret lures out there for catching marlin in the skirt department at least. Um, I just like to make sure I've got plenty of variety out there. So today, I use these three. I use this one up close, it's got a big head on it, so it really moves a lot of water, makes a big smoke trail. Um, it's about nine inches long and a nice dark, dark color so it, it uh, silhouettes nicely in the bubble trail that's left by the motor. So I'll go that one there because it causes the most commotion and can be seen in that uh, up close next to the turbulence from the motor. Second lure back, I'll use this guy. He's got a narrow head. Uh, he, he's got a lot more action in the water. He darts around a bit. Same thing, leaves a big, big smoke trail and um, I've got him in a nice bright, sort of like a dolphin fish color. Uh, or, or Lumo, I think it's it's called, and uh, yeah, so very contrasting, very easy to see, very bright, stand outish, and then further us back around this guy here, nice and natural, really small profile. So this is kind of like your last ditch effort to get a fish that comes up into the spread. This will be the last lure they set, they see if they don't take any others, and it's your last chance to convince them to eat your lure. So I like to go for a nice natural. I like to think it looks like a little flying fish and a small, subtle little head, so it just darts around. And, um, and yeah, well, proof is in the pudding, it got eaten by that wahoo today. But I, just, I think the main thing, it doesn't matter what brand or style or size or color, I think as long as you've got a variety of heads, a variety of sizes and a variety of colors in your spread, you'll, you'll eventually turn a fish up. Um, you just gotta give them plenty to choose from and they'll pick the one they like best. So it's pr really pretty simple. If you haven't been uh, trolling for pelagics before, it's, it's not a bad thing to get into, as you can see. Bit of madness there, got three nice fish in the bag. And um, look, you can go even better than that. You can get the marlin and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, pretty simple setup, very easy to do. You don't need to bring much gear at all. Just bring a couple of spare skirts, a few spare hooks, your four trolling rods, and away you go. But I'm gonna get home, I'm gonna fill up those fish up. And I might even show you my favorite way to cook some dolphin fish up. Well, talk about a productive day on the water. Not bad. That's the end result. So that top dolly there, that's about 140 centimeters. The bottom one is about 120, and the wahoo is about 120 as well. That top one there, oh, I don't have my scales. I don't know where my scales are going, but I reckon it'd be about 15 kilo, maybe maybe 16. It's a really solid fish. It weighs a ton. So um, an absolute cracker. I'm stoked to stoked to get them. Uh, it's particularly all in like one hour. That was uh, unreal. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these guys up. I've got a cool little trick to show you with the dolphin fish as well. Um, it's a really handy little trick to do if you're going to catch yourself a couple and clean them up and uh, you want to take the skin off. So I'll show you that, then it's time to knock the filts off and get into the kitchen. So what you want to do with a really sharp knife is just cut through the skin on an outline of the fillet. 
Now don't cut too deep, just through the skin. Try not to cut too deep into the gut cavity either. And do that on both sides. Now you should be able to lift up the skin near the head with your fingers and peel it back a bit. Like so. Now grab a pair of multi-grips. This is easier with two people, but you don't have two people, one will do. Just make a bit of a cut around the gut section there. <coughs> and it should just peel off all the way down. What you're left with is a beautiful skin free piece of dolphin fish. Now, do that with both sides, and uh, away you go. Now, let's knock the fillet off. Once the skin is off, just fill it like normal, and away you go. Right, our legends, it's time to tantalize the taste buds a little bit. This is one of my favorite ways to have fresh dolphin fish. It'll work on other fish as well, but I reckon dolphin fish really just takes it to the next level. It's a bit of a spin on the old flour, egg, and breadcrumb. Bit of a spin, but a big improvement. So, it's very simple. Anyone will be able to do this at home. So, let's get cracking. Right, the ingredients you're gonna need is some plain flour in a bag. I've got two eggs and a bit of milk as an egg wash. And I've got a 50-50 mix of panko breadcrumbs and grated parmesan cheese. And it's that parmesan cheese that makes it absolutely next level. When it's fried up, beautiful. So, our first step, grab a couple of pieces of fish and put it in the bag with the flour. Give it a spin. Give it a shake to make sure it's well and truly coated. Grab it out and straight in the egg. Now, similar with the flour, you wanna make sure the egg is coating every bit of the surface there, because this is gonna make like a glue to make our breadcrumbs stick. From the egg, bit of drain straight into the breadcrumbs. Now give that a shake. Now give them a quick check and make sure they're coated. Beautiful. And number two. Oh, these are gonna be good. These are gonna be good. Now I'll do the rest of these, then we'll chuck them in the pan. Right, guys, all our pieces of fish are coated and ready to go in the pan. Now, before I start, I will say it is Christmas time. We're not trying to be healthy. We just want to eat things that taste good. So keep that in mind. Probably not the healthiest option to do your fish in, but hey, tell you what, the end result, unreal, unreal. Let's get cooking. Now, we're not going to be cooking these in oil today. Instead, we're going to be using a bit of butter. So preheat your pan and chuck some butter in just before you're ready to go. The hotter the pan, the better, because you want to get a nice, crispy, and golden brown outside. Don't skimp on the butter either. Make sure the whole pan's coated. And add your fish. And you want to cook those until they're golden brown on the outside. Now give them a quick check. <laughs> Perfect. Flip them. Look at that golden brown. That is going to be tasty. Easy there, champion. Get back down. Oh, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Well, right, guys, we are ready to roll. Have a go at these. Oh, steady on there, champion. This is going to make an absolutely delightful feed. Look at that. Golden brown crispy mahi mahi treats. Absolutely delicious. They're probably gonna be really hot, so I'm gonna talk for a bit longer while these cool down so I can have a bit of a taste test. These are perfect to chuck in a wrap. You can have them with salad, you can have them with anything. Even better still, no salad at all, just have a plate full of it like this. Bit of tartare sauce. Tell you what, you'll be in flavor country. What do you reckon, we give one a crack? Yep, look, they're not real cold. I can give you the hot tip.
Ow. But yum. Guys, you have to give that a try. It is amazing. It is amazing. Cook it for someone special in your life and they will be forever in your debt. Plenty of brownie points earned from this, I reckon. Right, guys, it's the moment you've all been waiting for, I'm sure. Let's draw out the two prize winners from last week's competition. Best of luck to you all. Hope you have a win. I'm on the YouTube random comment picker website. Got my YouTube URL here. Filter the comments. And the number of unique commenters is 457. Let's pick our winner. And winner number one is... Who's it going to be? Cliffo. Cliffo with a big novel. Congratulations, Cliffo. You have won prize pack number one. Okay, winner number two is, who's going to be, Redman90. Congratulations, mate. You have won prize pack number two. Well, a big congratulations to Cliffo and Redman90. You guys are now the proud owners of some brand spanking new Goliath baits. Shoot me a DM on Instagram and I'll get those out to you ASAP. Of course, a massive shout out also goes to Wilson Fishing and BCF for supplying the gear. They are absolutely legends. Make sure you show them some support, guys, when you're doing your Chrissy shopping. And of course, thanks to everyone else who entered. Unfortunately, you didn't come away with a win this time, but there is plenty more opportunities to get involved with competitions in the very near future. Well, guys, that's all we've got time for this week. Massive thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. And of course, a very merry and safe Christmas to you all. Hope you have a great time with your friends and family and even sneak in a little fish or two. Guys, if you like to learn something in this video, please hit that like button, leave us a comment below, or if you're new to the channel, this is your first time watching, make sure you hit that subscribe button because there is plenty more fishing action to come, just like this, every single week. So hit that subscribe button, join the community. Guys, have a good one, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.